Malibu Media has been suing people for online piracy for years, probably about the past nine or ten years. They've been making claims against people who allegedly used BitTorrent file sharing software to pirate their videos. Well, I have been defending people because I think this practice is abhorrent because it doesn't, to me, in my legal opinion, doesn't meet the standards for jurisdiction, which is when Malibu pleads a, a case that rises to a level of plausibility, that if they accuse an internet connection of infringement, that that's going to lead to the infringer. Instead, I think it's only a possibility that it will lead to the infringer, and that's not enough for a court to have jurisdiction over the matter. But regardless of how I feel about it, Malibu has been successful at defeating me and many other attorneys in these arguments and getting their cases to court and then having their cases heard on the merits, where we have to provide facts about the defendant's use of the internet. And if the defendant testifies under oath that they did commit the infringement, or if their computer does show evidence of the infringements, then Malibu is likely going to be able to convince the judge of that infringement. But what's really happened is a lot of these cases have led to settlements instead. Probably more than 90% of the cases that aren't dismissed right away, 90% of the cases that are pursued are probably settled because of the costs involved with defending copyright litigation in federal court over a technology issue. You're going to have to have an attorney who knows what the heck they're doing. You're going to have to have an attorney who's familiar with the technology, who knows how to hire an expert witness, who knows how to argue over the evidentiary issues. Do we let the plaintiff scan the defendant's hard drive and look through their emails uh, and, and, and look through all their personal photos and videos. No, we want to limit all of that. So this becomes an expensive thing to go to court and defend all of these issues from an aggressive plaintiff. Well, something's happened to Malibu, and I don't want to speculate about what it is, but something terribly, terribly bad has happened to Malibu because they seem to have stopped responding in court. They went through a couple different attorneys over the years. I believe they've had some default judgments against them. And now one of their proprietors or owners of the company is facing arrest for not responding in a case where they are required to respond. So let's take a look at this Malibu Media versus William Mullins case that now involves Colette Pellissier as a party. She is now a third party representative of the corporate citation respondent. I don't know exactly what that means, but she is the representative of Malibu Media, who's listed as the citation respondent up here. I'm not exactly sure what the word citation means in that context, but whatever. This matter is before the court on judgment creditor William Mullins' omnibus motion. Okay, <laughs> let's hang on a sec here. Let's back up. Judgment creditor means William Mullins has already won a judgment and therefore he is a creditor and Malibu Media is a debtor. And he has made a omnibus motion for turnover, which is to turn over discoverable information, probably about the money, the finances. Where's the money? Where's the money, Lebowski? Well, where's the money, Colette, is what William Mullins is asking right here. The court previously issued an asset restraining order, and the omnibus motion seeks permanent relief in the form of a turnover order from assets found in the possession of Epic.com, which is a payment processor for these kinds of services. Epic is withholding from payment what the court's restraining order defines as the XART proceeds. Pursuant to the restraining order, Malibu Media and ZO Digital we're also required to produce documents. So this is the key. And restrain XART proceeds, but they failed to do so. That is the big deal. When the court orders you to do something, you had better do it, or you will be subject to the court's inherent authority to sanction. The omnibus motion seeks a declaration of rights, a turnover order, and further injunctive relief, including a procedure for the award of statutory penalties. Epic filed an appearance, but Malibu Media, Zio Digital, Colette Pellissier, and Brigham Field, who's the other owner of Malibu Media, 
neither filed an appearance through counsel nor appeared individually at the October 8th hearing despite one week's notice. The court entered a $48,656.73 judgment for prevailing defendant William Mullins pursuant to the Copyright Act, Section 505, the fee-shifting provision. Malibu opposed the award of fees. The district court premised its award on the fact that Malibu Media repeatedly refused to turn over specific information undergirding its claims, and that rendered plaintiff's complaint frivolous and objectively unreasonable. We know that frivolous and objectively unreasonable cases do get an award of fees. That was the Akila Hughes versus Carl Benjamin case. Akila Hughes' position was objectively unreasonable, had been pretty much from the start, or at least from uh, March of whatever year was after the complaint was filed, when the court told her and her counsel that she probably wasn't going to win and that they should talk about settling the case. So her claims were objectively unreasonable, and so fees were given to Carl Benjamin. The court found and ordered a monetary award to both compensate Mullen's injury, defending a meritless claim, and inversely to deter Malibu Media, who has filed thousands of such lawsuits, such as the one Mullins was forced to defend. The court's judgment, unfortunately, did not deter Malibu Media from continuing to be Sphinx-like and unresponsive in the face of court process. What, what is the riddle of the Sphinx? See, I don't know this. I'm learning, I'm learning something. Hang on. The Sphinx is said to have guarded the entrance of the Greek city of Thebes, asking a riddle to travelers to allow them passage. The most famous riddle is which creature has one voice yet becomes four-footed and two-footed and three-footed. She strangled and devoured anyone who could not answer. Oedipus solved the riddle by answering man, who crawls on all fours as a baby, then walks on two feet and as an adult, and then uses a walking stick in old age. Okay, I learned something today. Malibu ignored Mullen's demand for payment of the judgment. Mullins then obtained a citation to discover assets, designating Colette Pellissier as the corporate representative of Malibu Media, and Mullins served Malibu with the citation on April 20th, 2021, reproducing the demand, the refusal, and the consequent citation to discover assets. Over the course of the next four months, May through August, Pellissier, on behalf of the judgment debtor, Malibu Media, proceeded to carry out a series of dodges to make it appear as though Malibu was cooperating with Mullen's asset investigation. However, Pellissier was actively undermining that investigation by not providing any documents and by diverting Malibu's assets to her husband's business, Zio Digital. Mullins uncovered Malibu's asset diversion and, via an ex parte motion, obtained a restraining order from the district court. The restraining order was directed to Malibu, Zio Digital, and Epic. Epic processes credit card transactions and pays to Zio Digital. The order further restrains the XART proceeds, defined as the proceeds of the website's commercial activities, and required the enjoined parties to produce specified documents and specified interrogatories. As required by the court's restraining order, Epic provided documents and sworn answers to interrogatories, but Malibu and Zio Digital have not provided documents and have not provided sworn answers to interrogatories in the period the asset restraining order allowed. Sworn answers would be something that would add to this in the sense that if you then lied to the court, you're not just lying to the court, you're lying under oath, so it's also some kind of perjury or some other violation, so it you're stacking these things. So you give somebody a court order. If they violate that order, it's contempt or sanctionable. If they swore under oath and that was a lie, then you have another set of consequences to that. So we're stacking all of these consequences. The, the defense attorney is doing a really great job. Zio Digital moved to vacate the order. Mullins addressed Zio Digital's attack on the court's restraining order and showed that Zio Digital claimed no ownership interest in either XART copyright material or ownership of XART proceeds. Mullins further demonstrated that Zio Digital is, in any case, a subordinate claimant to Mullins' status as a judgment lien creditor. Regarding Malibu Media, since being served with the restraining order on August 14th, Pellissier filed a dilatory extension motion on behalf of Malibu, claiming it needed time to find an attorney. Yeah, this is one of the problems that we've been running into. In the past, they've had trouble retaining their attorneys. Uh, some of the claims have been that they don't pay their attorneys. Uh, one of the times their investors sued them, 
They even got a default judgment at one point. So any attorney who researches Malibu Media might hesitate to represent them because they don't get paid. So maybe the attorney needs to get paid up front, and maybe Malibu Media doesn't want to give that money away. Mullen's response described Pellissier's efforts to avoid testifying and a motion that Pellissier emailed to Mullins but did not file with the court. As to the allegation that it was diverting assets, Pellissier's motion states that neither I nor Malibu Media have hidden nor diverted assets. However, Pellissier does not address or try to explain the fact that despite having no ownership interest in XART copyrighted material or proceeds, Zio Digital nonetheless collects 100% of those proceeds. In its sworn answer, Epic states that when served with the asset restraining order and with respect to any account connected with XART, it possessed a merchant processing account denominated in Epic's books and records as account number such and such in the name of Zio Digital and under the applicable contract has been paying Zio Digital weekly on Thursdays. Epic's answer further states that it has restrained a total of $22,000. That's not a lot of money. We're talking about a worldwide recognized entertainment site. That's not a lot of money. Epic produced documents showing that from 2013 to 2017, the same merchant account was in the name of Malibu Media. So they've changed the account name and that the previous contract specified that Epic was to make weekly payments to Malibu Media at a Bank of America account. The documents further confirm that on March 3rd, 2017, Malibu Media made a 100% assignment of its Epic contract rights to Zio Digital. The 2017 assignment contract specified a Zio Digital denominated bank account at Wells Fargo, into which Epic was to make weekly deposits. The 2017 contract does not specify the consideration for the assignment. In other words, what did uh, Malibu get in return for assigning these rights to Zio Digital? Uh, we don't just assume that these companies are owned by the same people, and so therefore that's totally okay. No, these companies are supposed to be uh, operating above board. So if you're transferring property to a company, you should be getting an, an equal amount of consideration in return. At least according to the terms of contract law, you should be getting at least a mere peppercorn. The contract only specifies that the transfer was for good and valuable consideration, the receipt of which is hereby acknowledged which is a way that attorneys attempt to get around that requirement. Both in the documents it produced and as confirmed by Epic, from 2017 through August 2021, when it was served with the restraining order, there was no change in the identified depository bank or identified bank account into which Epic deposited the net proceeds. Epic's books and records did not indicate the existence of any party, including Epic, that claimed a lean-in or otherwise asserted a security interest against XART proceeds. No party filed a claim against XART proceeds in the time allotted by the court. Epic's books and records indicate that between February 17, 2021, when this court entered its judgment, and August 14, 2021, when it was served with a restraining order, Epic paid Zio Digital a total of $125,397.07, which was the net after fees and charges from the XArt.com proceeds. That's, again, a very small amount of money. We're talking about having to support Colette, Brigham Field, the actors and actresses, the production company, like the the operating costs of production out of $125,000 in fees from February through August. So let's just do the math here. We've got February, March, April, May, June, July, August. So that's six months. Let's just double the amount and say that they made $250,000 a year. That doesn't sound like a lot for a major adult entertainment company. Moreover, from the time Mullins served Malibu Media with a citation to discover assets, April 20th, and a judgment lien arose as a matter of law, Epic paid Zio Digital $83,000, a subset of the one twenty-five. dollars Zio Digital then received $83,000 in funds encumbered by Mullins' judgment lien, to which Mullins has and has had a superior interest. Accordingly, it is hereby decreed and ordered that the judgment creditor's omnibus motion is granted, and it is specifically ordered that this declaratory relief applies. First to XART proceeds. 
Mullins asserted that the XR proceeds were the property of Malibu Media and he supported the factual assertion with citations to sworn testimony by Pulisier and Field. On that record, the court granted the restraining order, finding that there was good reason to believe that Mullins would likely succeed on the merits in its assertion that Exarc proceeds belong to Malibu Media and not Zio Digital. Neither Malibu Media nor Zio Digital contested the fact that Exarc proceeds are Malibu's property. Both Pelissier and Field submitted or filed pleadings in this matter after being served with the restraining order. Neither filing contested the fact that Exarc proceeds are Malibu's property and therefore Malibu and Zio Digital are both conceded on the issue. A frivolous motion buys the movement no time, the court notes. The documents provided by Epic support the conclusion that XArt proceeds are Malibu's property. From 2013 to 2017, the merchant account directed the payment of the net revenue to Malibu, consistent with Pelissier's and Field's prior sworn statements. Based on the foregoing, the court finds. Throughout all relevant times, Malibu has been the fee-simple owner of the copyrighted material. Mullen's execution lien on the proceeds is valid and has priority. The court grants injunctive relief as set out below. In re Epic, Epic's answer indicates that its contract governing the processing of XR proceeds is obligated to pay on a weekly basis. They further indicate that Epic accumulated five weekly payments. That total is $22,000. Consequently, given the funds it holds belong to Malibu Media and are subject to Mullins' judgment lien, Epic shall turn over to Mullins the accumulated net weekly payments, which Epic reports is now $35,000 through August 7th. Thereafter, on a weekly basis, Epic shall continue to withhold the prior week's net payments and beginning October 14th, Epic shall identify the gross revenue and the net client payments and report each week to creditors' counsel. Epic shall issue payments to the Peacock Law Group client trust account so that those payments can be made to the defendant. In re Zio Digital, since the entry of judgment, Zio Digital has received 125000 of which 83000 is subject to Mullen's judgment lien. That's the difference between the judgment in February and the judgment lien in April. Since it was served with an asset restraining order on August 14th, Zio Digital is the enjoined party and has appeared through Brigham Field. Field has submitted a dilatory motion to vacate but otherwise failed to produce the required documents relating to the proceeds, Epic, the merchant account, the coin payments account, the Wells Fargo account, in, into which this $125,000 has been deposited. Those proceeds are now subject to restraint. He's failed to file a required sworn answer, and he has failed to retain counsel willing to file an appearance in the matter. Based on the foregoing, Zio Digital is in default of multiple obligations under the asset restraining order. Zio Digital's motion to vacate is denied. Because of its default, Zio Digital is barred from making any further objection to this proceedings unless it appears through an attorney, restores all diverted funds, produces all documents, and files a sworn answer as required. The court further finds that Zio Digital's failure to obey this court's order to produce documents and restrain funds has injured Mullins. To remedy the injury, the court finds that a conditional judgment of $51,000 is entered against Zio Digital. A court may enter a conditional judgment against a garnishee for the amount due upon the judgment against the judgment debtor. A rule is issued to Brigham Field as the designated representative to show cause why he should not be held in contempt of court for failing to produce documents and submit an answer identifying the funds Zio Digital has restrained. If Field fails to show cause and fails to comply with paragraph 14c below, the court shall hold Field in civil contempt of court. Civil contempt of court is usually a fine of an amount of money until you remedy the thing that you haven't done. So until he complies, there could be a fine of like $100 a day or something like that. Field, on behalf of Zio Digital, shall turn over to the clerk of court to hold in escrow an amount of money equal to the funds on deposit at the Zio Digital Wells Fargo account when Zio Digital was served with a restraining order. Field shall deposit such funds by October 22nd. That's five days from the recording of this. Field, on behalf of Zio Digital, shall turn over to Mullins all documents identified in and responsive to the court's restraining order. Field shall turn those over by October 22nd. 
Zio Digital is barred from further objection until it has remedied the defaults set out in this order. In re Malibu Media, I'm getting excited here, guys. I don't know if you can tell, but I love watching the downfall of this copyright troll. At all times relevant, Malibu Media has had the financial means to satisfy the district court's $48,000 judgment. So yeah, along the way, let's not forget that there's only a $48,000 judgment against a company that clearly has $250,000 a year easily. Rather than pay, Malibu has chose not to cooperate in the caption supplemental proceedings by producing no documents, twice failing to appear for debtor examination, and a third time failing to appear despite the court ordering Pellissier to do so or face arrest. Malibu Media deliberately failed on multiple occasions to disclose documents related to the Epic Merchant account for Exart and documents showing that it was diverting Exart proceeds to Zio Digital. Malibu thus has hindered, delayed, and interfered with these proceedings. Since the entry of judgment and the initiation of supplementary proceedings, Malibu has deliberately failed on multiple occasions to thwart the weekly transfer of the XART proceeds to Zio Digital. Malibu allowed $83,000 to be diverted, despite such transfers being specifically prohibited by the citation to discover assets Mullins served on Malibu Media and subject to his judgment lien. Since the entry of judgment and the initiation of supplementary proceedings, Malibu fired its counsel of record and has not obtained a substitute, thus disabling itself from litigating in this district court. See, there's a problem here. Malibu Media is an LLC, I believe. Yeah, Malibu Media is an LLC. That means LLCs need to be represented by counsel because the proprietor of the LLC is a separate person or separate entity. So. There could be a conflict of interest there. Uh, Colette Pellissier might be more interested in defending herself than the company, so the company needs its own representation. Based on the foregoing, Malibu Media is in default of multiple obligations under the citation to discover assets. Because of its default, Malibu is barred from further making any objection in these proceedings unless and until Malibu appears by attorney restores all diverted funds, making those funds available for the satisfaction of Mullen's judgment, produces all documents specified in the rider to the citation to discover assets, and makes Pellissier available for a debtor examination at a time convenient to all parties. Furthermore, at a July 23rd, 2021 hearing, this court ordered Pellissier to appear in person for the Malibu examination and warned, if you fail to appear in Chicago for that citation examination, I will issue a warrant for your arrest. It's that simple. I will issue a warrant for your arrest, says the judge. This is a complete reversal from the Colette Pellissier that I met in court nine years ago or eight years ago at the conclusion of that first Malibu Media trial, the Bellwether trial before Judge Michael Bailson in the Eastern District of Pennsylvania. Now, after many thousands of lawsuits, almost 9,000 lawsuits, now somehow the thing has fallen so far that she is facing arrest for not cooperating with the very court cases that she brings against these sometimes innocent defendants, many times innocent defendants. Pellissier, without just cause, failed to appear. The court issues a body attachment order for the arrest of Colette Plissier. So there is an arrest warrant being issued, but suspends that order for 14 days until October 22nd, 2021 at 10 a.m. I will, I will be watching the court's docket with bated breath. I kid you not, bated breath. At that time, the court shall review Brigham Fields and Zio Digital's compliance with the restraining order and determine whether the suspension should remain in place or whether the court will vacate the suspension and order the execution of the body attachment order to arrest Colette Pellissier. In reattorney's fees, pursuant to Local Rule 54.3c, Mullins requests that the court provide a briefing schedule and a short procedure for Mullins to present a motion for legal fees that would also seek to amend the existing judgment in accord with any allowance of additional fees. So in other words, the judgment they got now is probably the attorney's fees, and maybe maybe there's some damages in there. I haven't looked. But now there's more work to be done. They, they didn't just stop at the judgment and get paid. The thing wasn't over then. The defense attorneys had to do a lot more work to get to this point. 
So now they're saying the necessity for that work was unreasonable and frivolous, that that should be compensated. So we're going to see whether the judge rules in favor of the defendants there. It sounds like they will, and it sounds like Malibu will now owe even more money. Mullins further requests that he be allowed to bifurcate his presentation, moving first for a finding of legal liability and then, if successful, providing the court with a submission on the value of those legal services. Mullins is prepared to argue at least two legal bases for fees, first as an extension of the law and logic of court's memorandum opinion regarding Mullins' fees as a prevailing defendant under the Copyright Act, it makes no sense to award fees for frivolous filings made pre-judgment if the judgment debtor can thwart that judgment by continuing to act in bad faith, make frivolous and dilatory findings, and hide assets subject to the court's judgment, lien, and process. Malibu's continued intransigence and bad faith effectively taxed Mullins and co-counsel, whose reimbursement is net of the time, effort, and expenses they must unnecessarily spend to achieve recompense in these proceedings. Second, there should be a penalty for Pellissier's violation of the transfer prohibition of the citation. In the law, these kinds of disputes are not meant to be punishment. Copyright damages are not meant to be punishment. They're meant to be compensation. Even statutory damages are not meant to be punishment. The punishment is above this damages. So if all of this is true, which it sounds like it is, because this is a court order and not a party's filing, then Pellissier's actions and misconduct should be not just compensated, but also punished. The misconduct rises to such a high level that you need to deter and punish this kind of thing, not just compensate the opposing party for their loss. Pellissier violated the restraining provision of the Malibu citation by repeatedly allowing the weekly transfers to her husband's company after being served with the citation. The judgment creditor, the defendant, has a good faith basis to seek additional fees as set forth in the court's oral rulings on the omnibus motion. The court will provide further direction as to any fee petition at a later date. As provided in the law and as stated in the order itself, the injunctions of the court's asset restraining order remain in effect. Those injunctions are only modified as specified in this turnover order and otherwise those injunctions remain in full force and effect until vacated. And then we're going to hear from the court again during a telephonic hearing on October 22nd. If I can attend that hearing, I will attend that hearing. That is October 12th, Judge Thomas M. Durkin for the Northern District of Illinois Eastern Division. And I love it! This is amazing to see the downfall of such a terrible copyright troll who has really affected so many defendants' lives. I... As a defense attorney in this area, I am 100% on board with the idea that someone who committed copyright infringement should suffer some kind of damages and have to compensate the copyright owner. If you steal a photograph, if you steal a video, if you retransmit a, a TV broadcast illegally or whatever, yeah, something's been done that's wrong, it's against the law, and some level of compensation has to be made. What I object to is allowing these defendants to accumulate large number of infringements and then going after them for $2,250 per title for titles that are worth probably around $20 a title. It makes no sense to me that such a large award would be given for such a small act. If I walked into a local video store and I stole 10 videos, I wouldn't be asked to compensate the video store to the tune of $2,000 per video. Yes, I'd probably also get a criminal charge. That's something that really can't be measured in dollars exactly. But Malibu getting a civil judgment or other plaintiffs in these kinds of cases getting civil judgments of thousands of dollars per infringement, it just sounds immoral to me and it really should be illegal and I'm not entirely sure why the law allows this. But I have explained to my clients that the law is written this way and does allow this, so we have to act as if we're not going to win that argument unless my client is really willing to take that risk once they know all of the risks involved. So I'm really happy to see the downfall of Malibu Media, that at least there's one fewer plaintiff in these kinds of cases. We still have Strike 3 Holdings who 
as Malibu went down, Strike Three Holdings rose up. Many of the same attorneys represent Strike Three Holdings after they left Malibu Media because these are lucrative cases for the plaintiffs and their attorneys. I would argue that Malibu probably made more than $250,000 a year on these kinds of cases. I don't know whether they were only making $250,000 a year over the past 10 years, but uh, taking the number that we saw here, $125,000 in six months, and doubling that for an annual revenue or net revenue of $250,000, if that's really what they were making, I'm pretty sure that they made more than that uh, through their lawsuit system. And I think that's pretty terrible. You really shouldn't be using the legal system as your revenue generation scheme. These are more philosophical questions because judges have time and time and time again ruled that Malibu was allowed to do this and this is legal no matter how immoral I believe it is. So I don't want to defend them in any way, but I'm also not trying to defame them and making it sound like they're doing something terribly illegal. What seems to be illegal is not responding to the court's orders. Well, I don't even need to say seems. What is illegal is not responding to court orders, uh, not turning over the amount of money once you have a judgment and an order to turn over the funds. So that's what's going to get Brigham Field and Colette Pellissier in really big trouble, potentially jailable trouble, arrestable trouble if they don't comply with the court's order. So I'm really excited about this, and I'll make a follow-up video for you as soon as we find out what's going on on October 22nd, or whenever the hearing ends up being. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Yes, you disobey a court order, believe it or not, straight to jail. <laughs> you know I love to see it. And that's our show. Thank you for watching. Special thanks to our top supporters in October. John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Spirit Bear, Benjamin Hytoff, Ugly Grill, Torpedon, Shadow Tycho, Earthbound Star, Pure Magma, Drew Hart, Tech Tech Potato, and Eric Tams. You can support Lawful Masses on Patreon.com slash LJ French and Sponsus.com slash Law or through YouTube memberships and through Floatplane subscriptions. Join me for our weekly live production stream on twitch.tv slash lawful masses on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern U.S. time. I hope everyone has a great week. I love you all. Bye.